Hello and welcome to this session of product design and value engineering. In the previous lessons, we have discussed design for manufacturing, design for assembly, design for maintainability, and design for production. To keep up with this trend of design for X, that is design for excellence, today we will discuss about design for environment. What effect uh, our product will have on environment and how to tackle those effects in the design cell, design stage itself. And we'll see some examples of uh, some companies taking initiatives to uh, achieve those design for environment impacts. Firstly, let us discuss what are the environmental impacts and what are the major environmental issues. The most predominantly issue that we talk to, uh, when we talk about environmental issue is this term called global warming. Now, all you might be aware that uh, in recent years, in recent 200 past years, the temperature of the earth has been seen rising rapidly. In last two decades only, the temperature of the earth has risen. Uh, Average temperature we are talking about has increased about uh, half or one percent, one degree Celsius. This is may not, this might not seem very much, but given the trend, it is a very high impact because in last few million years, the rise in Earth's temperature was about only 0.2 degree Celsius. But in recent years only we have seen the temperature rise of about 0.6 or 0.8 degree Celsius. So this is a major issue, a major concern for many people who are studying these effects, who are studying why global warming is happening and what should be done to avoid that. Now, why does this global warming happen? Why temperature of Earth is keep on rising? This happens because of an effect called greenhouse effect. Uh, and this effect occurs due to greenhouse gases. Now, what is this greenhouse, uh, greenhouse effect? So, when uh, radiation from sun caves, that is shown here by this arrow, yellowish arrow, what happens is ideally it should come to earth, some uh, radiation will be observed by the earth and other will be reflected back to space. But there are some cases which observe these radiations and those known, are known as greenhouse gases. Now what will happen due to increase in these greenhouse gases is that the radiation that comes from the sun will be stored by these greenhouse gases. So, heat will be stored in these greenhouse gases and after some time, they will release this heat. So, in the daytime, they will store this heat and in the nighttime, they will release that heat. So, the radiation which was supposed to be reflected back to space now remains in the atmosphere of the earth and it will rise, raise the temperature of the earth uh, in a significant amount and all is all this effect is due to the greenhouse gases now normally when we talk about greenhouse gases our main focus is on carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide because those are the major contributors in this greenhouse effect okay the another major concern is resource depletion now we know that many of our resources on the earth are limited. For example, fossil fuels, for example, agricultural lands. So we are if we do not think twice about using these resources, this resource might get obsolete in recent time. For example, the fossil fuels, coal, petroleum products, etc. We have to use them carefully otherwise they will not be available in very near future in upcoming 100 or 150 years another 
a major concern is solid waste because we are producing so much amount of waste and we are just literating or without even thinking about it the major concern when we talk about solid waste is plastic waste because they do not depreciate or they do not disintegrate very quickly they take uh, hundreds or thousands of years to disintegrate in the environment way so these are also major concerns also the pollution is a major concern if we talk about water pollution or we talk about air pollution so these are the major concerns and air pollution also goes back to uh, the greenhouse effect uh, also because most of our air pollution is carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide if we talk about cars or industries most, most of the air pollution will be in form of carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide and it will also add on to greenhouse effect also the it will uh, result in some breathing problems so all these need to be considered and land degradation because uh, the food we prepare comes from the land and if we do not take care of our land then it will be major problems if our land becomes uh, uh, it does not uh, uh, support the irrigation or uh, farming then it will be a very big problem for us and when we talk about all these issues of environment and we compare those issues with our product then we see that there are two different life cycles of each and every product the first life cycle is the conventional life cycle which we already understand which in which there is some raw materials then we will produce something then we will distribute it and we will use this and after the usage we will give that to recovery if possible and this cycle goes on production raw material to production distribution to use but in addition to this life cycle of product use there is another life cycle of product manufacturing which focuses on recovery of product then to change it into some form of deposits to convert it into some form of resources and again to uh, lead to materials which can be used in same product or some other products so the first life cycle which is production life cycle or use life cycle is not very much of concern to environmental issues that is of concern for customers but when we talk about environmental issues this recovery resources deposits is a major concern and how to reduce this environmental effect how can we solve this problem of environment while we think about the product development or think about the production so there are mainly one predominant strategy that is suggested over the time and it is very logical also what this strategy strategy suggests is we should first reduce our uh, use if it is not necessary we should not use it use it only if it is extremely necessary buy your products only if it is extremely necessary just do not buy anything or don't use anything for the sake of using once you buy or get the product try to reuse it for example if you have a polythene bag and it is not dirty try to reuse that polythene bag again and again it will reduce the amount of plastic that goes back to environment the first step should be try to avoid polythene bag if you have a bag at home which is made of something else some material some say it is made of clothes so try to carry that bag while going to shopping otherwise if you buy a bag uh, for shopping if you buy a polythene bag then you take the bag at your home do not throw it away try to reuse it when you go for the next time then recycle it try to 
recycle the product if you are throwing away the polythene bag when you are manufacturing new bags try to use the same material of the old bags and recycle it if recycling is also not possible then try some recovery recovery in terms of uh, components in terms of uh, products or in terms of heat try to extract as much as much energy or components as possible from that non recyclable product and after that only think about disposal normally what we are doing with plastic is we are using it without thinking and we are throwing it directly away for disposal that is not a good practice so this is a very logical this thing makes sense to everyone but still we are not following it which is a bad practice so whenever you think about product this is the strategy that needs to be implemented if we want to save our environment now when we thinking about design for environment what strategies should be implemented and now this is very complex topic because we also have to consider the manufacturability we also have to consider the production we also have to consider the maintainability and all these aspects will come in play so instead of discussing design for environment and the guidelines about it we will have some case studies with us and we will discuss how they have tried to improve the design such that the environmental impact impact will be minimized first let us discuss this example of stock a trip trap chair now what they have done is this company have designed a chair which can be used during uh, different life stages of a person without changing much in design but only by some modular design so if this chair is to be used by a very small toddler then we can simply put uh, we can simply take a pad from it we can simply took a, a, a part of it and fix it somewhere else and it will be used by a toddler when it grows then we just readjust the chair and it will be used during his entire life cycle a person's entire life cycle if this design was not there then what we'll do we'll buy a small size chair for toddlers we'll buy a small uh, a somewhat bigger size chair for kids and then we'll buy a regular size chair for teenagers or adults so instead of buying three different chairs this chair will uh, reduce the product uh, of three chairs to one chair only now what do we mean by this design for environment process this is the flow chart of design for environment process and we can see here that first we need to decide our design for environment agenda then we identify potential uh, uh, environmental impacts of our design and then we follow some guidelines to reduce the impact and then we ask the question if our design is good enough and then if it is not good enough we go to again redesign and if it is good enough then we can go with the production for new design this is very similar to design for manufacturing but instead of focusing on cost we are here focusing on design uh, that reduces impact on environments itself now what will be the life cycle impacts of this design for environment products so we can say that there are two types of products one is material intensive products in material intensive products most of the uh, effect on environment will be due to its materials for example if you are uh, talking about uh, a plastic chair or this hardware some hardware then the material will the material used in the product will affect environment greatly and then there will be some used intensive product in which material 
itself does not affect environment uh, much but the use operation of the product will use impact the environment very much for example if we talk about a car then material used in car may not be significant on environmental impact when we compare the operation of the car because the car requires fuel and fuel emits some gases which are polluting our environment and the amount of gases a car pollutes uh, will be very high when compared to the material used in it but when we talk about hardware for example laptop body or for example a chair or plastic bottles then during the life cycle during the use it will not affect environment but during the uh, manufacturing the material or its uh, disposal will affect the environment in a greater so that was the two different types of products now here are some examples of some companies which have done their bits to reduce the impact of environment this dunlop goods are developed by the company dunlop which are recycled goods and as they are recycled they will reduce the environmental effect of producing new raw material then this knife has also considered design for environment in their design by reducing the carbon dioxide emission or reducing chemical products and all these they have considered as they have developed this product which is uh, favorable to environment or we can say that which is less dangerous for the environment the so fourth has developed this smart eco gauge which gives you idea about how much uh, uh, effect you are uh, uh, doing on your environment and they have manufactured an engine which will be less uh, damaging to environment and this gauge will give you an idea about how much saving to environment have you done by using this car also another company a puma has come up with this idea of clever little bag in which uh, instead of using bags and uh, packaging uh, they have combined the idea so instead of using separate box and packaging they have combined the idea of box and packaging into one single product and they have reduced the material required for the bag also they have improved the functionality of the bag after you have purchased your bag you do not need a separate carry bag and you do not need a separate box also the material required for the box is reduced drastically and you can use the bags in other applications also so these are some ideas that we can implement for design for environment it will be great help to our environment to implement those and to save our environment it will be a way forward for sustainable development that will be all for today's session thank you